So what if you're not standing on something flat? And what if instead, let's say we put a box on a ramp and we want to uh, talk about our Newton's law equation. So uh, the first step is always going to be to draw our free body diagrams. So uh, what direction is the force of gravity going to point on the box? Straight down. So your gravitational force is always going to point straight down. Now, what about our normal force? Yeah, so it's going to be perpendicular to the plane of the ramp. So if we had some angle theta here. So this is what your free body diagram looks like for a block on a ramp. So your gravitational force is always going to point straight down. And then your normal force is going to point perpendicular to the, uh, the angle of the ramp. OK, so these are both vectors. So if you added these two vectors together, you would get some So if I added the normal and the gravitational force, and I'm going to call that some new vector, we'll just call it F total. So if we start our origin in the middle of our box, then uh, if we take our normal force, we drew that vector first, maybe I'll redraw it in red. And then we add the vector of our gravitational force on the end of that, so from this one, then we go straight down. Then you would see that your resulting vector F total is going to be pointing in this direction. And so conceptually, that makes sense, right? If I put something on a ramp, it's going to slide down the ramp. So there has to be some total force that's pointing along the direction of the ramp. We can figure out what that total force is by breaking these vectors into components. And that's what we're going to do now. So. There's several different ways to do this. So we've got our block sitting at some, the, the wedge has some angle theta. There's some mass sitting on top of the block. We saw the normal force points this way and the gravitational force points that. So if we draw our coordinate system how we normally draw it, where x points to the right and y points straight up, you'll see that the gravitational force is in the uh, all in the y direction. 
but now our normal force has both X and Y components, right? So just like if you were given a velocity at an angle and projectile motion, you had to break it into X and Y components, we're gonna do the same thing with this normal force. So I'm gonna draw, so the first way I'm gonna show you is gonna be using geometry. And if you don't like geometry, that's fine. I'll show you another way. And the other way is the one that I use when I do these problems. Uh, but I think it's important to see the geometry also. So here's our ramp. This is the angle theta. Our normal force is pointing perpendicular to the ramp. So we know that this is 90 degrees. And then we also know that the other side is 90 degrees. Now, If we want to break our normal force into X and Y components, this uh, arrow that I've drawn in black has to be the hypotenuse of whatever right triangle we make in order to get our components. The X component has to point straight out that way. and then the Y component has to point straight up. Okay. Now we know, because we drew this as a right triangle, this angle is 90 degrees. So, if you think back to your uh, geometry, if you have a, a line going like this, and then you have two uh, parallel lines that are bisected by this uh, diagonal line, if this angle is theta, uh, do you know what this angle is? I just heard bumbles. Right, this is also theta. So we know this angle is theta. So what does that tell us about this angle? So if you remember, everything to the left and right of this normal force was 90 degrees. So if we have theta, what is this smaller angle gonna be? Right, this is 90 minus theta, but this angle is theta. So if you add up theta, 90 minus theta, and 90, you'll get 180 degrees. So, uh, we just did a bunch of geometry and trig stuff to figure out what our new triangle looks like. So now that we have that, I'm just gonna draw that new triangle for us. So this is the normal force. This is the Y component of the normal force. And this is the X component of the normal force. And we said that this angle was theta. So if we wanna break the normal force into components, if we did sine of theta, that's opposite over hypotenuse, which equals the X component over the normal force. So if we solve this for the X component of the normal force, we get that it goes with the sine of theta. 
So this is the opposite of what it was for projectile motion, right? So this is why I was saying, don't always assume that the X component goes with cosine and the Y component always goes with sine because that's not always gonna be the case. And this is one of the prime examples. So then we'll do the same thing for cosine theta. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's the Y component. And so the normal, the Y, the y component of the normal force goes with cosine theta. So that was the maybe complicated and messy way to do it with geometry and angles and trig. But now I'm gonna show you the method that I use. And this is basically just guessing and checking. So So if I take this ramp and we saw that the normal force points perpendicular to the ramp and gravitational force points down. If I, and uh, we, let's say I guess I am using my projectile motion uh, logic, and I just say that the X component goes with cosine, which we just saw is not the right answer. And we say that the Y component goes with sine. You can check this by taking the edge case where what happens if my theta goes to zero? So in your head, or you can draw a picture, if you make theta equal to zero, your ramp just becomes a, a flat surface. And you have your normal force pointing up and your gravitational force pointing down. So if you plug that theta in for your guesses, cosine of zero and sine of zero, what is the cosine of zero? One, so this is times one. And then what's the sine of zero? Zero. So now look at this. So now we're saying that the Y component of our normal force is zero. Does that make sense with what we've drawn and what we know from what we talked about previously? No, right? So the way we've drawn it, the Y component is pointing straight up and down and we're using our normal coordinate system definition. So this is, this guess was incorrect. So if, if we had instead guessed that the Y component or the X component goes with sine, and the Y component goes with cosine, and then we did the same uh, edge case where theta goes to zero, then we would get For the X component, we would get sine of zero, which equals zero. And then the Y component, we would get cosine of zero, which equals one. And that makes sense with what we've drawn in our picture, right? That all of our Y, all of our normal force is pointed in the Y direction because we're on a flat surface. 
Okay, so this is one way uh, oh to do this. And then there was this other way where you had uh, to do a bunch of different geometry and trig to figure out what angle theta was in the triangle you're using to break your normal force into components. It was where uh, we were on a ramp and things got more difficult. So let's look at that. So, uh, so this is just in general ramp problems. So you'll be given some angle of the ramp and that angle is always this bottom angle. And then you'll assume that your ramps are right triangles. And now uh, if there's, assuming that there's no like, you're not driving the car up the ramp or anything like that. If this is just sitting on a ramp, then you'll have two forces that are normal force that is always perpendicular to whatever surface you're sitting on. So because the ramp is at an angle, your normal force can't point straight up. It has to point at an angle that makes a right triangle with the surface of uh, whatever it's sitting on. Now your gravitational force will always point straight down. So for these ramp problems, gravity is always pointing straight down and your normal force will uh, go in a not straight up or down direction. Okay, so if we drew a conventional coordinate system, where this is the x direction and this is the y direction, then we see that gravity is all in the y direction, but now our normal force has both x and y components. So because normal points in two directions, we need to break that vector. Um, but so for now, let's say that we, we know uh, how to do this quickly. And we say that the Y component is cosine theta and the X component is sine theta. So now we can redraw our free body diagram where the Y component of the gravitational or the normal force points up. Oh, let me draw this out and make it. So now the Y component pointed up for normal. The X component points in this direction. and the gravitational force points straight down. So it might not be super obvious to see in this drawing, but it will be uh, in the next example I show, but you have forces in you have a force in the x direction that would cause the box or car to start going down the ramp, right? So if there, if if the normal force pointed straight up, uh, if the normal force pointed straight up and gravity pointed straight down. Um, there's no force in the X direction that would cause you to move in that way, right? So that this situation doesn't make sense physically because we know that things on ramps slide down. The ramp. So that's 
one of the reasons why the normal force can't point in that direction. Okay, so uh, to get back to your uh, problem set that you were working on, uh, for number three, your friend is pushing, they say, horizontally on your car to stop it from going down the hill. So they are pushing in the x direction like that. So uh, I think was number three asking what the force of the push was, I think. So let's solve for that. So this was our free body diagram. You have the Y component of the normal force pointing up, the X component of the normal force to the left, the pushing force to the right, and gravity straight down. So because we have two directions now, now we have two Newton second law equations. We have an X direction and we have a Y direction. So I'll write them like this. So it's the same as in one dimension, but now things in the X direction have an X subscript and things in the Y direction have a Y subscript. <clears throat> so we're interested in the pushing force. So we might look in the X direction first. So some of the forces in the X direction, we have our pushing force, which is in the positive X, if this is our coordinate system. And then the normal force in the X is in the negative direction. And then if the goal is to prevent the car from going down the hill, our acceleration is going to be zero. So our pushing force, if we solve for that, we get that it's equal to the X component of the normal force. And we said that the X component was uh, sine theta. Okay, so do we know what the normal force is? So the, the answer is no, we don't know what it is yet because we need to solve the y direction first in order to find what the normal force is. So if we take our y equation, so some of the forces in the, oh, this should not have an n. This should just be some of the forces in the y. Sorry about that. Okay, so some of the forces in the y equals m a y. So again, if this, uh, if the goal is for the car not to move, then your acceleration is zero. And the left side of your equation, we have the y component of normal force is up. The gravitational force is down. And you have no acceleration. So the normal, the y component of the normal force equals the gravitational force. So if we plug in the trig function for the y component, we get normal cosine equals fg. And we're solving for the normal force so that we can plug it into our x direction. So our normal force equals fg over cosine theta, which equals mg over cosine theta. <clears throat> 
So now we can take this equation for our normal force and plug it into our x direction. And so I'll, I guess before we do that, uh, we see that the normal force isn't just mg. It's being modified by this cosine theta term. So uh, that's kind of what I was saying when uh, I don't want you to think about the normal force as just mg, because that's not always the case. We saw with the elevator, it's not always just m times g. And we saw, and we're seeing in this uh, ramp problem that it's not just m times g, it's mg. Uh, divided by cosine theta. Okay, so if we solve for the push by plugging in what we know now for the normal force, mg over cosine theta times sine theta, then the push that he's would need to be pushing at to stop the car from rolling down the hill is mg. tan theta. <laughs> yeah, this is. We have a slightly different picture. So here's our ramp. Now your friend is pushing directly up the hill like this. So this is the free body diagram. And I haven't broken anything in the components yet uh, because we're gonna do this slightly differently. So if I keep my coordinate system like this, which you can do and is totally fine, uh, we would have to break the normal force and the pushing force into components. So we've already broken the normal force into components, uh, but we would have to break the pushing force into components. So if, for example, you had just started a problem and it looked like this, uh, keeping your coordinate system oriented like this, you would need to break normal and pushing into components. So that's two, two vectors you have to break in the components. What if instead I rotate my coordinate system so that the y direction is now perpendicular to the ramp or in the direction of the normal force, and then my x direction is down the ramp. So now, uh, how many vectors do I need to break in the components? So normal force is already in the y direction, so I don't need to break that apart. The push is in the negative x direction. So now gravity is the only thing that's pointing in two different directions. It, it has a y component and an x component. So if I uh, want to break gravity into components, uh, the x component is going to go with sine. And the y component is going to go with cosine. And now, uh, if we set up our two Newton's second law equations in the y and the x direction. So again, so now the, the push is in the x, this red negative x direction and the x component of gravity. So I guess, let me, draw this, so now I have a y component of gravity like that and an x component of gravity like that. 
and so I guess before I get into the math, so this uh, red X component of gravity is pointing down the ramp. So let's pretend there was no pushing force. Uh, I think it's really clear to see now why the box or the car is going to slide down the ramp because it has this X component of gravity that's pulling it down the ramp. So the normal force is just perpendicular to uh, the ramp and this uh, Y component of gravity is just going into the ramp. Uh, but you have this very clear vector that's pointing down the ramp and making it slide down the ramp. Okay, so uh, back to problem four that we're working on. So in the X direction, if we wanted the push, we see that the X component of gravity is down the ramp. And you can also make your coordinate system. You could have said that X was up the ramp and Y was still perpendicular like that. That would have been fine too. Uh, but I chose uh, the red drawing. So uh, that makes the push negative. And if the goal is that this car doesn't move, then your acceleration in the X is zero. So now your pushing force is going to equal the X component of gravity. And so we said that the uh, X component of gravity is mg sine theta. And so this is just your answer. So if, if the problem asks what the normal force is, then we would have to go into the y direction. Uh, so normal force y component minus uh, the y component of gravity. And again, that would be zero. So the y component of the normal force, oh, there is no, it's just all in the y direction. Fy. So the normal force equals mg cosine theta. 